My name is Greg Schmalley. I'm a pediatric orthopedist at Seattle Children's Hospital and an associate professor of orthopedics and sports medicine at the University of Washington School of Medicine. This presentation is a summary of research that was presented in 2012 at the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America meeting. It looks at the uh, eff efficacy or lack thereof of physical therapy or physiotherapy uh, after routine treatment of supracondylar humerus fracture in children. However, our, the results of our randomized uh, control trial revealed that there was no benefit, no added benefit to physiotherapy for return of function or motion uh, in children ages 5 to 12 treated for routine supracondylar humerus fracture. One of the most frequent questions asked by parents after the cast is removed uh, from a child who's had this injury is, well, should we go to therapy now to get the motion back? And therapy's not an inexpensive proposition. Uh, therapy visits in this study, six in number, uh, which was the typical recommended by our local pediatricians, uh, would it, uh, cost more than $500. Uh, and that doesn't include the opportunity cost for uh, a parent missing work to take the child to the therapy sessions, nor the cost for the child missing school. Supracondylar humerus fractures are the most common operatively treated fracture at Seattle Children's Hospital. One to 200 per year are treated non-operatively due to their minimal displacement with three weeks of casting routine. An equal number are treated operatively by close reduction pinning under general anesthesia, followed by a similar period of immobilization. With so many children coming out of long arm casts, complaints and concerns over stiff elbows are common. Many parents expect treatment to be prescribed for the stiffness, yet there is little data to support therapy after elbow fracture, fractures in children for return of motion or function. Blount stated boldly that children know best how active to be when recovering from such an injury, that when left to their own devices, they'll recover in the shortest possible time. We asked the questions, does physiotherapy provide a benefit to return of motion or function after supracondylar humerus fracture in a child? Is there a subset of patients who might benefit from therapy, such as those with anxiety? We offered enrollment to all those ages 5 to 12 years, with a closed, isolated supracondylar humerus fracture, displaced or not, excluding those with polytrauma or those who required an open reduction during their surgery. Patients who lived a great distance from the hospital typically elected not to enroll. Patients were enrolled and randomized to PT or no PT, but were treated similarly for the first three weeks. After the cast was removed, at week three, the PT group underwent therapy, planned to be six sessions total. Patients were assessed via a variety of functional questionnaires, as well as by a therapist blinded to the treatment group. We initially found lower function in the PT group, with the differences between groups resolved by the six-month follow-up. More anxious patients fared worse with lower functional scores in the PT group than did anxious patients in the no-PT group. All patients, regardless of treatment, PT or no PT, return to sports and basic activities of daily living in a similar fashion, and there were no differences between groups when comparing motion or function by fracture treatment or fracture type. In summary, we could find no advantage to physiotherapy following routine treatment of supracondylar humerus fractures in children. At a time when healthcare costs are rising rapidly, identifying unnecessary expenditures is important. Thank you for watching.